Hello, we are watching the news broadcast daily and following today's headlines. The Central Steering Committee for Anti-Corruption convenes first session in Hanoi. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung attends the cremation ceremony for late Cambodian King Father Norodom Sihanouk. Homeland Spring program takes place in Hanoi to greet overseas Vietnamese returning home for Tết. The Central Steering Committee for Anti-Corruption convened its first sessions in Hanoi on February 4th. The sessions was chaired by Party General Secretary Nguyen Phu Trọng. At the session, Tho Huy Ru, head of the Party Central Committee's Commission for Organization, announced the Politburo's decision on the establishment of the Central Steering Committee for Anti-Corruption. Accordingly, the committee is directly under the Politburo and comprises 16 members led by Party General Secretary Nguyen Phu Chao. Five vice chairmen of the committee include Lê Hồng Anh, Politburo member and standing member of the Party Central Committee Secretariat, Ngô Huy Dụ, Politburo member, secretary of the Party Central Committee and head of the Party Central Committee's Commission for Inspection, Nguyễn Xuân Phúc, Deputy Prime Minister, Wong Chu Liu, National Assembly vice chairman, and Nguyễn Bá Thanh, head of the Party Central Committee's Commission for Internal Affairs. After the committee made its official debut, Standing Vice Chairman Nguyen Ba Thanh unveiled the committee's working program for 2013. On the occasion of the forthcoming Lunar New Year, President Chung Tung Sang on February 4th visited Information Brigade 205, a unit awarded with the title of Hero of the People's Armed Forces. Since its establishment 55 years ago, the brigade has been entrusted with ensuring information and education, especially during important political events of the party, state, and armed forces, as well as during search and rescue and emergency cases. In recent years, the brigade has equipped itself with the latest equipment, expanded networks, and overhauled its system to ensure communication for the military and national defense in the new situation. Addressing the event, Sang stressed the importance of ensuring information and education amid growing complexities in the region and the world. Via the brigade's communication system, Sang extended his New Year congratulations to the authorities of Chung Sa Tao and Nam Yet Island in Santo Khanhua province. He also visited the Special Force Mission 1 under the Special Force High Command. He asked them to thoroughly grasp the party and state's forces and closely liaise with forces to fulfill their assigned tasks. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung joined international guests at a cremation ceremony for late Cambodian King Norodom Sihanouk in Phnom Penh on February 4th. On behalf of party and state leaders of Vietnam and the Vietnamese people, Prime Minister Dung expressed deep sorrow for the death of Cambodian King Father, who is the close friend of Vietnamese. He affirmed that it is the great loss of Cambodia and its people. He said, Vietnam will never forget Sihanouk's valuable support of its struggle for national liberation and reunification. He added that he will do his utmost together with King Norodom Sihamoni and other Cambodian leaders and people to continue maintaining and promoting the two countries' fine traditional relations. On the same day, Prime Minister Dung met with his Cambodian and French counterparts in Phnom Penh. Meeting with Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen, Dung affirmed his resolve to foster the relations between the two countries. The two Prime Ministers expressed their delight at the friendship and comprehensive bilateral cooperation over the past time, especially in economics, trade and investment. 
They highly value the joint activities during the Vietnam-Cambodian friendship year in 2012, saying that they have raised public awareness, especially among the younger generations, about the friendship, cooperation, and mutual support between the two peoples. During talks with his French counterpart, Jean-Marc Iro, Dũng said, 2013 will be a good year for Vietnam and France to lift their bilateral relations to a strategic partnership level. Dũng added that Vietnam always attaches importance to developing traditional ties with France, one of Vietnam's priority partners in Europe. He spoke highly of the France commitment to provide Vietnam with 340 million US dollars in official development assistance in 2013. He stressed he wished to accelerate bilateral economic ties, especially in energy, space and aeronautics, infrastructure and housing. Both sides confirmed that the two countries will work together to successfully organize activities during the Vietnam-France, France-Vietnam year 2013-2014. They also agreed to develop the Hanoi Technology Science University to international standards. Before leaving home from Cambodia, Prime Minister Dung had a working session with the Association of Vietnamese Investors in Cambodia. The United States remained Vietnam's top seafood market in January, although it has raised a number of trade barriers against the country's exports. According to the General Department of Fisheries under the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, seafood exports to the U.S. occupied 19.15% of the total last month. It was followed by those to Japan and the Republic of Korea, with 17.81% and 8.36% respectively. Vietnam's January seafood exports brought 376 million US dollars to the country, a year-on-year -year increase of 3.5%. This year is considered tough for Vietnam's seafood exports due to a shortage of capital, materials and labor. However, experts have forecast an increase in global demand in the near future and the sector is likely to earn 6.4 billion US dollars this year. To boost seafood exports, the ministry urged the sector to continue investment in raw materials and intensify technology improvement, supervision on product quality, as well as trade promotion activities abroad. As the Lunar New Year Date Festival is only days away, an annual program entitled Homeland Spring kicked off in Hanoi on February 3rd to greet overseas Vietnamese returning home for the holiday. The Homeland Spring program is considered a meeting place for overseas Vietnamese throughout the world when Tết comes. Many overseas Vietnamese have expressed their happiness when returning home on the traditional Lunar New Year and witnessing the country's renewal achievements. I myself, together with 4 million overseas Vietnamese, feel honored and delighted to welcome the Lunar New Year in the homeland. The festival brings the overseas Vietnamese from countries around the world closer. In particular, we established a community to support each other and do helpful things for society. Over the past time, a series of policies have been issued to meet overseas Vietnamese aspirations, including policies regarding investment, citizenship, property ownership and immigration. They create conditions for overseas Vietnamese to contribute to the country. Organized by the State Committee for Overseas Vietnamese Affairs, this year's program focuses on honoring the nation's unique all-shipping right of home kings as part of the world's intangible cultural heritages. Attending an art exchange as part of the program on February the 3rd, President Chung Tân Sang affirmed that socio-economic achievements Vietnam has made over the past year were greatly contributed by overseas Vietnamese community. Đảng, nhà nước.
The Vietnamese party, state and people assert that overseas Vietnamese are an inseparable part of the Vietnamese nation. The state leader praised the expatriate spirit of looking towards the homeland and extended the best wishes of the party, state and nearly 90 million compatriots in the country to the overseas Vietnamese community. And that is the end of our news today. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.